We're wrapping up on our focus sessions on digital transformation in CX. Last but not the least, we're discussing the rise of green tech with our guest, Wendy Gonzalez from Sama. Let's go. It has been said that in the digital world, information is the new currency. Information holds perpetual power as it flows across networks, making it more relevant as it builds on itself. In this age that we live in, information is acquired through digital technology, which unfortunately not all communities have access to. Today we learn about digital divide and how uplifting communities through digital empowerment can be the solution that we need. The CX expert joining us today is the CEO of SAMA. SAMA provides high quality training data to power AI technology used by leading technology companies such as Walmart, Google, NVIDIA, GM, and Getty. Under her leadership, SAMA has achieved three-year revenue growth of 134% gaining recognition on the INC 5000 list as one of America's fastest growing private companies. The company was also recently named one of the most promising AI companies in the Forbes AI 50 list for 2021. Prior to taking on the role of CEO, she spent five years at SAMA as COO and is an active board member of the Layla Jana Foundation. As CEO, she is one of the new female leaders within the male-dominated AI industry. With two decades of managerial and technology leadership experience, she is an executive passionate about building high-performing, high-functioning teams that develop and scale innovative, impactful technology. A thought leader in the AI and tech industry, she has undertaken several conference and speaking opportunities, including the Women Tech Network, OpTech Report, Lean Startup Week, Digital Trends, live Forbes book, radio, and tech first. It is a huge honor to introduce an industry force today, my friends. Let's all welcome Wendy Gonzalez. Hi, Wendy. Welcome to our session today. Hello. Thank you so much. I'm really, really pleased to be here, Dan. Thank you for having me. Oh, very honored that you are with us in this conversation. And, you know, it's such a lovely topic that we're going to dive into. And I'm sure that I personally will learn from this as well as our audience. Um, Wendy, I do have a series of questions prepared on my list for today, but you know, before we even dive into that, uh, we'd like to get to know more about you. So uh, if you can share to our audience, what is your uh, typical work day for you? What is a typical work day for you? Well, um, it starts uh, with getting up very early. We have three kids, a dog and a couple of fish. <laughs> so it starts with feeding and preparing the entire family, uh, getting them ready. And then uh, as I, I know, um, just like uh, just like at TDCX, we are a global company. So morning, morning start early, uh, lots of time, probably a third of my time spent with teams, a third of my time spent with board and investors, a third of my time uh, ideally in front of customers. So uh, it's it's been very fun. And while I know I've got a virtual background now, but if you were to see my actual background, I'm actually sitting in an Airstream trailer that is parked in my backyard. So um, we are still remote. Uh, although uh, I very much am excited about uh, the world just getting back a little bit more to normal because I certainly enjoy meeting our teams and uh, love meeting partners and customers. Thank you for sharing that. Lovely to hear something uh, from our audience, I, I mean, from our guest. Now, uh, like what I said, I do have a series of questions and uh, I also have my, uh, my questions that are not on my script. So uh, I'm excited to ask those later. You've been in the business, you've been around, you've helped a lot of organizations. Uh, it has been your personal advocacy to empower individuals through long-term sustainable solutions. How did you find yourself in this path? Wow, that's a great question. Well, after uh, over 20 years in technology, starting in uh, consulting and actually uh, supporting outsourcing and customer experience, uh, I moved on to private enterprise and spent a couple, uh, another decade uh, working with uh, wireless companies and, and in the communication space before I launched an IoT startup, uh, really helping build a SaaS platform to connect devices. All that time while leveraging technology was absolutely something I was super passionate about. I uh, had had long desired to see if there was an opportunity to actually take this knowledge of building businesses and scaling technology, impactful technology to something that could impact society. And so I was um, incredibly uh, honored to have an opportunity to join Sama where I can share you know, a little bit more about what our mission is because I think that's the, the uh, topic of discussion, uh, but uh, extremely passionate about um, leveraging technology 
to affect change. And I believe that business can be a force for social change. So I'm delighted to be here and delighted to spend more time talking about it. Thank you for uh, sharing that to us. You, you mentioned uh, leveraging technology, and that is truly the topic for the day. And this times, you know, mo especially in a lot of organizations were moving to a hybrid model and access to technology is more essential than ever. Do you agree, Wendy? Uh, Wendy? Yes, uh, absolutely, 100%. My first question is, has digital divide been a longstanding issue in our society? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Pretty much since the inception of the, the internet. Um, those who lack access to computers, internet connectivity, uh, basically the world's most underserved, they not only lack the access, but they, they lack the kind of the awareness and the knowledge and know-how to get connected to jobs in the digital economy. And that's where we know all the greatest growth has occurred in the course of the last couple of decades. This is actually how and why Sama was, was launched. We were really founded under this belief that talent is distributed equally, but opportunity is not. And the digital divide creates even more barriers to that opportunity. We created a purposeful hiring model to bring people from underserved communities, those really with the greatest barriers to employment into the digital economy, not based off of any qualifications, but really based off of impact criteria. So for us, so for us that means hiring those that are living below the World Bank standard for poverty, uh, which is less than $2 a day for household income, and also focusing on hiring at least 50% women. You know, it's very interesting to know that this has existed you know, and, and has been there for a very long time. Uh, I'm very interested to know, and I guess this would be a fantastic uh, thing to share to everyone, but digital divide, it, did the pandemic uh, make it more prominent? Um, yeah, that? absolutely, absolutely. Because as, as I just shared a moment ago, um, the digital divide has always existed and, and it takes purposeful action to connect people to the digital economy. That is where so much job growth is going. And if you're uh, a young person or, or, or somebody who does not have an opportunity, does not have sort of the education, the access and the understanding of how to build those digital skills, it becomes even more challenging. That's really where our purposeful hiring model came into play was to build those digital skills and then do full-time hiring so that people could actually build those uh, build those market demanded skill sets. Well, as you can imagine, what happens uh, not only if you're not in position to have internet connectivity or even a, a computer or a laptop to be able to work, especially in the pandemic. Um, it, uh, I feel strongly that the pandemic has significantly increased inequalities really all across the globe, not just between rich and poor societies, but really between the different types of workers. Um, mm -hmm. Those who are able to work from home and those who need to work in person. And um, I can certainly share more interesting stories about our transformation during the pandemic. But even, you know, for somebody who's never worked in the formal workplace before, it's one thing, you know, if you've had experience to make a transition to, um, you know, a, a remote work, what if it's the first job that you've ever had um, that creates even more, more challenges? So it really focused us uh, uh, in general, not just Sama, but in general, to really develop and, and, and uh, both adopt new technology. Um, I, I know <laughs> Zoom fatigue was never a word um, up until, uh, <laughs> you know, a couple of, a couple of years ago, um, but it's also been an accelerator for change. So I think what's really interesting is, is um, you know, with the workforce that we, we employ, which is primarily in underserved communities, uh, as an example, we do work with internet providers to lay out over 50 kilometers of fiber. Um, to, to hmm. get that level of internet access. And that, uh, in many ways, when you can create that access, not only does it allow people to get connected to jobs in the digital economy, but as you can imagine, allows people to continue to go to school, to buy groceries online, um, things that are, I think, quite uh, quite powerful. So uh, we, it's, 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 it's very fascinating, but um, you know, what started as a internet connectivity at the home um, to, to do work uh, became you know, professional development, training, and you know, buying, buying less costly you know, bread and vegetables and groceries because you could do so online. So very powerful. Thank you. You mentioned empowering communities by giving them that access. Can you share with us what companies do to contribute in the digital empowerment of communities? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
technology is is you know a force multiplier for uh, for work empowerment. I mean, ultimately, what I mean by empowerment is really giving people the right and the means to be sovereign in their decisions and their actions. Uh, for communities living in countries where where this is a cha this challenging, technology can be sort of the the, the vector or the driver for change um, to not only give people tools to access things that they may not have been able to access before, but to ultimately have the information and make better decisions. Um, one of the things, and I'm pretty passionate about this, as I'm, I'm sure is TDCX, is, is AI, right? I mean, artificial intelligence is is a talk about empowerment. It, it kind of super multiplies the amount of information and data that we can process. And that uh, I, I think it can be and should be uh, at the forefront of uplifting and empowering uh, communities. It's everything from you know, giving work instead of aid, which is, you know, the model that this almost shows them, but ultimately about digital skills, uh, skills training, uh, and um, ultimately having access to, to, to basically continue to, to, to move up the value chain through, through leveraging um, this, uh, this technology. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing those. You know, how, how can companies keep the interest among its employees when it comes to getting involved? As, as, you know, there's a, you, you mentioned that it's very critical that a lot of communities have access to this now. Um, how can companies help on this? Yeah, um, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that I would uh, I would advocate for for people to to um, vote with their dollars and vote with their time. So what I mean by that is, you know, we have very powerful roles, right, as as consumers, as employers, to make the right and intelligent decisions to hire people, to hire services, to hire to 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 purchase. Um, in a way that is meaningful. And what I would deeply, deeply encourage is that people consider social impact criteria such as digital empowerment. And that can take place in a lot of different ways. Everything from a purposeful hiring model, um, something like Sama has where we, where we go into underserved communities that lack access to technology, provide the technology training and the employment to build skills, all the way to, to uh, working in community to provide the incredible technology or, or services that you have to give, to give uh, people access. So we worked in some pretty uh, with some pretty incredible um, NGOs, as an example, who bring you know computer centers and access to uh, communities who might not have had access before. Um, and then you know I encourage people to when I said you know vote with their with their dollars and time is 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 to get engaged. You know as employees you can say hey company management you know teams we think it's really important that we get involved in the in the community. We can do that by for example um, you know. Developing, you know, customer, um, you know, customer service training in underserved communities to allow those people to build skills to get jobs at incredible companies like, uh, like, uh, like TDCX, um, as well as, um, you know, encouraging our, our our teams to to be, um, you know, to to hire, for example, other partners that might keep in mind uh, some of this level of digital empowerment uh, or purposeful hiring. Okay, I've been hearing a lot of of involving uh, involvement, and in, and in you just going there and, and helping out. Are there any other pieces of advice you can give, uh, can share to the audience and how they can make a difference in their own way? Yes, encourage your uh, partners, encourage your you know, employees to, uh, it, for fear of being repetitive, to vote with their dollars, to encourage them to work with companies that, are, that have you know, that, that are in not only encouraging or directly contributing to digital empowerment, to um, engaging in the community. Uh, it, it's incredible when you make those decisions. As an example, I'll just use one simple example. Um, they're they're uh, conflict, conflict minerals. Uh, that was a terrible thing at many points of times, or even think about the, you know, cacao business, right? Being mm -hmm. able to say, hey, this is not what I want to purchase from. I want to purchase from companies who responsibly, you know, uh, source their minerals. Well, it's the same thing here with work. People who are responsibly and, and, and effectively uh, working to bring um, digital empowerment to communities in need. That is something that we can um, demand of our, of our partners, uh, demand of ourselves, and, and do that by, by voting with our dollars. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you for sharing those advice. And those would truly help a lot of organizations. Now I'm going to dive into my uh, my question that's not on my script. We've been talking about AI, the technology, how it empowers communities. For you, what's your favorite thing about technology? 
Oh wow, we could we could sit here all day. There's so there's so much about technology that is just uh, absolutely incredible. I mean, it it it, it superpowers us. Uh, but I mean, one of the things that I'm really really excited about, you know, in in uh, in artificial intelligence in particular is. You know, not that, you know, imagine, uh, imagine a day where, you know, we, we can, uh, you know, democratize things like um, oncology and, and disease detection, because we've got machines to enable us to reduce the cost of that level of medical care in support of, you know, expert doctors and medical advice. We can reduce, you know, the amount of, of you know, both fatalities and injuries on the road to things like self-driving cars. Um, there's so much that uh, can happen both in terms of uh, safety and accessibility that is truly incredible. At that same time comes a massive responsibility with ensuring that the data and the sort of representation of AI is, is comprehensive. We don't want to have self-driving cars that don't detect, you know, uh, people of color, you know, as pedestrians or don't detect, you know, uh, um, uh, smaller figures like women as an example. So I think it's really incumbent upon us to to leverage this incredible force multiplier in a very responsible uh, and and representative way. So so I'm a, a huge huge fan of not only driving forward really this technology, this notion of AI for all, but ensuring that it's done in a really um, ethical and comprehensive manner, so that we can make sure that this incredible technology works for everybody globally. So. I'm super passionate about that. And if we had more time, I could tell you a dozen different examples of the, of the cool technologies that are being built that are uh, making a difference uh, every day. It's really fun stuff. I love it. So many things to look forward to. And we're excited of those new technology that's going to come our way. And uh, when, Wendy, thank you very much for being with us today. This, this exchange has directed my awareness toward an area of our society where equity must be addressed and you know there are really communities falling far behind or as you mentioned may have not just actually have started and uh it's it's a it's a journey in digital technology and knowing that individuals like myself and our audience and organizations can contribute to the empowerment of these communities we we have a role to play and uh, it is a significant realization that you reinforced with us today. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you for that insightful conversation. And we can't wait to have another one in the future for our audience. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you again in the next conversation. Thank you for joining us on this session of Transformative CX Talks. We have more discussions from esteemed CX leaders, so make sure to check out all our videos to learn more about the CX industry.